Hi, in this uh, fairly short tutorial, hopefully, we're just gonna have a look at customizing our studio. So if you've uh, started up our studio, it will look something like this by default. Uh, you've got four panes, although I, I think quite often when you start, it'll only have three, so it will look like this. Um, so yeah, you'll have sort of four panes. You can change the relative size of these panes by, if you, uh, hopefully you can see as I'm hovering on the vertical bar between the panes. Uh, it allows me to grab it and drag it. And similarly, if you go to the sort of gray horizontal area between two panes, you can change their relative sizes by sliding like that. Uh, there's also um, minimize and maximize icons. So we can minimize a pane, get rid of it. Well, we'll not get rid of it, but make it very, very small. And we can pop it back up again. And likewise, we can maximize the pain or pop it back down again. So, uh, you know, you can first of all set the relative size of panes just by, you know, dragging things around and you can minimize and maximize each pane. If you go to the tools menu, then within the global options, uh, this, is, this is basically all the sort of options for our studio. There's a big list down the left hand side that categorizes the options. And uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. Some of them are just, you know, just won't be relevant. D it depends on, on what you're kind of doing or what you plan to do with our studio. Um, a couple of things worth knowing about though is you can change the appearance. So the fourth option down uh, is options for the appearance. And basically you can set a theme here. So you can change the font. Um, you can change font size, but probably most important, there's a big list of themes that you can apply. Uh, so by default, you get this kind of white background with dark text theme. I don't particularly like staring at that, uh, that for long periods of time. It makes my brain and my eyes go funny. So uh, I, for example, typically use a dark theme, quite like solarized dark. So if you just tick on the, the uh, a theme in the list, it gives you a preview. If you click on apply, you can see what it's actually going to look like when applied to our studio. So that's, uh, that's the theme I, I quite often use. I quite often use twilight as well, which is another dark theme. Um, a theme like solarized light is uh, it's not a dark theme. It's very you know soft on the eyes. You could change to something like that. Uh, if you're into like old school <laughs> old school computing, uh, gob gives you this, which uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what I think about that, but maybe I should try it out. It is after all a dark theme. Um, there's plenty of other light themes as well. Um, clouds is a light theme um cobalt's a sort of bluey theme anyway you get the gist pick a theme that uh, suits your personality um yeah also you can adjust the pane layout so um the option underneath pane layout this is uh, the default layout so you'll get your the source pane that's where if you're working on quarto documents or code documents they'll appear top left the r console so this is like um it's basically like a direct access to r so it gives you the r command line that's typically bottom left then you've got a pane that carries information about the current environment, so objects you've created, data you've imported. It's just sort of a list of all the stuff that's currently sort of live in your environment. Um, there's you know, some other tabs in there. Um, if you're using Learn R tutorials like um, my students do, uh, there's a tutorial pane up there as well. That's typically top right. And then bottom right uh, is, a, is a pane that has various tabs uh, one of them shows you access to your uh, you know, file system. So it's sort of for navigating around. Uh, it's where help files uh, appear. It gives you previews of plots or previews of, of uh, you know, quarto documents when you render them, things like that. And that's typically bottom right. Now, that might be fine for you. Personally, I switch a couple of these panes around. So I switch the console from bottom left to top right. So I switch the environment and the console panes. Uh, so if I click on this drop down list here and uh, so I'm, I'm in the top right and I click on console, console's gonna go to the top right and environment's gonna go to the bottom left. Uh, the reason I do this is because typically I want the main document I'm working on to be very big. 
so that will be sort of on my left hand side sort of maximized uh, while I'm working on documents I quite often might try stuff out directly in R so I kind of want the the console to uh, so, you know sort of be open and accessible so I have that top right so I'm just sort of flicking left to right to go from my quarto document to the console um, but I you know I don't need the console to be like massive um, and the uh, you know the, the pane that shows your sort of files and previews of plots and stuff that's quite useful to see so that's also you know if you split sort of the console and that pane on the right hand side you can see both of them the environment pane I don't feel like I need open so you know I can sort of minimize that and then pop it up when I need it and so it makes sense for me for that to be on the left hand side because I have it minimized most of the time uh, which gives me sort of most of the screen on the left hand side to work on my quarto document but you know do whatever works for you so I'm going to apply that uh, and that shows you typically how I am working but that's maybe not how you want to work the final thing to mention is in the code options um, uh, since R 4.1 uh, there is a pipe operator built in which is uh, covered in a different tutorial and by default R Studio will um, it has a keyboard shortcut for inserting a pipe operator and by default it will insert the Magritta pipe which is part of the tidyverse uh, all of which may or may not make sense to you depending on how many of these videos you've watched uh, anyway it will it will stick in a Magritta pipe um, all of my teaching materials now we have migrated over to the native pipe because it's now built into R that's a bit more convenient so there's an option here use native pipe operator if you tick that then when you use the keyboard shortcut in R studio for a pipe operator it will put in the native pipe operator not the Magritta pipe so certainly if you're on one of my courses um, I would tick on that but I mean in general my sense is that things are moving towards the native pipe so that's maybe a good thing to uh, get used to using um, so we can apply all the all of these things by clicking on OK and there we have our studio set up ready to work like I said uh, typically this environment pane on the bottom left I would minimize it so I'd have um, you know, most of my screen taken up by a document on the left hand side okay